Hi, welcome to my lab. Today I will be preparing doll for special collab organized by one of the most talented and inspiring doll artists on YouTube, Doll Motion. She is organizing Mega Divus collab and inviting everyone to prepare a doll based on her stop motion Divus series. I am sure that you know what Divus series is and that's why you are here right now. I was planning to attempt to Divus collab since first time when Doll Motion mentioned that she's doing this on YouTube. And the first time I wanted to go very ambitious and prepare one of the animals which are used in science as model organism. I chose Cenorabitis elegans, very interesting organism used mostly in studies of neuronal system, but also molecular biology as well. Why don't most, you ask? Well, because I thought that it would be too obvious for me. Plus, I wanted to tell you more about C. elegans and why it's so cool. However, I abandoned this idea quickly because of lack of the materials and experience. After my recent failure on another ambitious but much less complicated project, I realized that I am not ready for such a doll. So I decided to make something easier and more accessible for me. As a canvas, I chose this kitty noir with horrible chunky hair. I took her because she already has some animal features and I like her pure black dark skin. My main idea for her is to make black and white doll. I love black and white dolls made by Pope Natalie and I wanted to do one on my own, but I really wanted to use dark skinned doll as a base. So Kitty Noir was perfect for me. I started from preparing the doll. I cut off this horrible pink mess, then I disconnected her head from the body and removed the rest of the glued hair from the neck hole. After this, I removed her factory paint using pure acid. I rerouted her using black acrylic yarn. After few evenings, I ended with this hair full of hair. I put to her neck generous amount of Elmer's glue and let it dry overnight. Then I started to brush her hair with pet brush, but it turned out that the glue wasn't fully dried and I pulled many of strands. Good job! Applause for this lady! Not bad, not bad. Now you... <laughs> I rerouted them once more, especially those on the hairline, and I added strong Gorilla Glue to the neck. This time I let it dry for a week until I fully brushed her hair. For her outfit, first I looked at some dresses on my stock to see which would fit to my concept. When I chosen my favorite, I teared all stitches to make pattern, which then I transferred on the paper. From another dress I took sheared part and prepared pattern as well. And yes, during filming sewing I was playing with transitions. It is quite fun! On skirt part I marked left side with masking tape. You know, clumsy safeguard. Then I started sewing. When you are attaching two parts of the outfit together, pay attention which side is left or right to have everything proper at the end. Of course, at the first time I made it wrong. Second attempt was successful. Also, I stitched front of this shirt to mimic button-down closure. I closed sleeves and sides of the dress, glued the velcro and it's done. I'm so happy it turned out, it looks so professional compared to my prototype. To finish it I prepared belt from black velvet. I protected it from frying using Mod Podge. Then 
Then I glued it to the dress using Gorilla Glue. I like this glue because it dries flexible. I'll be using it more often, even if it stinks kind of like phenol. At the end, I painted black bottoms using fabric paint. For her shoes, I picked these monster high shoes. I removed this floppy paint job and modified heels with exacto knife to remove the gear sculpting. Then I sanded down scars after cutting and painted the boots with metallic paints. Since outfit is done, I wanted to go into fun part, this is body modifications. I wanted her to have bended legs like many Divus characters made by Dolmotion Head, but my epoxy clay didn't come on time. I bought jewelry stuff to make cuts, but without clay it is useless. Luckily in Divus Universe, younger characters have got more human features, so body modifications are not necessary. And it was a good idea, because later I realized how jewelry saw is frustrating. I decided to give her as much animal features by painting. First, I sanded her body with nail buffers. For her tail, I painted this Catherine de Mew tail black. I sealed her face with Duraclear Ultra Matte Varnish diluted with water. I wanted to do something which is called reverse shadowing, I think. I couldn't make her black face darker to define her features, so I decided to highlight with pastels the highest part of the face like forehead, cheeks and nose. Great idea, but totally useless. Each layer of pastels just disappeared after sealing. I was aware that dark skin colors are difficult and even artists who use Mr. Super Clear have problems with it, but it was just pointless. Then I decided to use wet brush to apply the pastels and it kinda worked. It was totally not what I planned, but uh, when I mixed pastels with water I get this fur-like texture which quite works for this doll, so I decided to give it a try. I wipe off my first try with water and when face dried, I started again. I've dissolved pastels with some mica powders in water with Dura Clear Ultra Matte Varnish. Addition of varnish makes pastels permanent after drying. Important is to add water because pastels will not dissolve in varnish only. I applied this mixture to the doll's face in layers in direction from the nose to the sides of the face to add more dimension to the fur. Interesting is that pastels when dry became opaque, so keep it in mind if you want to try this on your own. Yet still, it is a fun alternative for paint. I also painted her body with pastels. I pastels to her joints to see how it will behave and it is not chipping. I'm really impressed. Many doll artists complain about painting joints with acrylics and chipping and uh, here is not a problem. Of course, if I scrapped it with my nail it come out, but, uh, but besides of it, it's quite durable. When everything dried, I sanded pastels from her lower legs because they cracked when the legs were touching each other. So yes, joints are not chipping, but of course leg are. I corrected with paint spots which are too messy for my taste. I 
also painted her ears. Yes, I could do this before rerouting. <laughs> I started with her face. For face up I am using acrylic paints only. I am using many metallic paints because everything looks better when it's shiny. To make her eyes even more sparkly, I glued some shiny foil for nail art to her irises and it looks beautiful. Finally, I painted her upper and lower lash line, and after this she started to look less creepy. For her lips, I went with it very simple. I painted her lip crease and lower lip, keeping upper lip as narrow as possible. I wanted to exaggerate her cut features, which I have no idea how to call in English, without sculpting. It turned out quite good. To finish paint job, I painted her molded panties with silver paint and make a little picture of Pushin on it. I thought also about Nyan cut, but it could look so sad in grayscale. Pushin is already grey, so she will be perfect. <laughs> when painting was ready, I took off the masking tape and corrected uh, mistakes with black acrylics. So, all paint job is done, doll is almost ready, and guess what? My epoxy clay came! <laughs> Off camera I styled her hair because I am not good in it and footage could be a mess. As a last detail I wanted to give her some whiskers made from my hair painted black, but they turned out messy and I took them off. After this she is finally done! So, meet my Victoria. She looks little like a daughter of Cat in the Hat, but still better than 2019 cats. I don't have any special story for her, because my first plan for her was totally different, and uh, maybe I shouldn't tell it aloud, but her final look was more accidental than planned. <laughs> but maybe this is her story. She's just a teenager who is still looking who she'll be. Maybe one day my Victoria will grow up and show more character. But even so, still I really like her. Her eyes are so sparkly. I was lucky to finish her for photo shoot in snow. Right now snow is very fragile thing. You know, global warming stuff. Anyway, this is my contribution for Divus Mega Collab. I hope that you like it. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time. Bye!